so there's nothing more important in mathematics than rational curves in hypercalar manifolds, and uh, and uh, we have a, a a great collection of bright young, bright young minds thinking about them, and now we're gonna listen about hear about them from Julia. So that with that I give I yield the the stage to Julia. All right, um, it's very nice to be here and uh, speaking at the seminar. Um, so it's possible that the first lecture is maybe um, too basic, but I wanted to sort of introduce a little bit compact hypercal manifolds. And uh, so uh, I apologize in advance if um, what I'm saying is going to be sort of uh, well known to most of the people in the audience. Uh, so the plan is um, to today to do a sort of general introduction about hypercal manifolds and uh, introduce some of the sort of basic tools that um, people use to study them and uh, put these things in action in uh, in the proof of the Yao Zaslow formula for counting curves and K3 surfaces, which is probably something um, uh, a lot of you are familiar with, but um, because some of the techniques are used uh, in other circumstances, and I think it's a it's a beautiful proof uh, which uses Lagrangian vibrations and um, some nice stuff. That's what I thought I would do in the first lecture, and then in the second lecture, uh, do some more actual things about uh, rational curves and hypercal manifolds. So. Um, so I'll start with sort of the basic definitions. Uh, hopefully this is not gonna bore you too much. Uh, so definition, um, compact Keller is called irreducible holomorphic symplectic. So IHS, if uh, it's simply connected and uh, the uh, space of holomorphic two forms is one dimensional and spanned by a holomorphic two four, a holomorphic symplectic one. Uh, these guys are hypercalor, hyper so they have a hypercalor metric. And in fact, in this talk, uh, hypercalor will mean this, um, even though it's a little, of course, hypercalor is more general because you can have things that are non compact. And here I will mostly consider uh, compact uh, things. And um, so, of course, the basic examples are K3 surfaces. Um, and uh, why do people care about them in algebraic geometry? It's because of the Beville uh, Bogomolov decomposition theorem. Um, so, if, uh, if X is compact Keller, um, with trivial first turn class, then um, up to a finite etal cover, X breaks into a product of, uh, so maybe the first I'd say a, a complex torus times a product of things I'll call YI and a product of MIs, where uh, these are a strict Calabiao. And, uh, and these are these uh, irreducible holomorphic symplectic manifolds. And so here strict Calbiao means simply connected and uh, no holomorphic forms except in the top degree. Okay, and, and so maybe let me just make a remark that uh, uh, people have started to think about singular versions of this theorem. of the decomposition theorem. And uh, in particular, there is a notion of, um, of singular irreducible holomorphic symplectic manifold, which are parts of the building blocks um, for um, Kavamata log terminal KLT uh, varieties with a trivial canonical class. 
So I just, uh, it doesn't really important what these things are. I just want to say that there's a, there's a, um, a theory for a singular uh, um, symplectic variety. And uh, the remarkable thing is that many things that hold for the smooth guys hold also for the singular ones. Things like uh, the deformation theory is very nice. Um, and um, the, there are versions of Torelli theorems. And uh, so I guess these are sort of the two main things that come to my mind when I think about things working as in the smooth case. Um, so yeah, that was just a, a little bit of a, of a side remark. And uh, before going ahead and tell you some properties of these guys, I'll remind you what the known deformation classes are. And a lot of them are well known to you all, but um, maybe just to fix notation. So we have, so um, in the whole talk, S will be a K3 surface. And usually it will be a projective K3 surface, algebraic K3 surface. So the first deformation class is uh, that of the Hilbert scheme of endpoints on a K3 and uh, its deformations. It's, um, it's a 20 dimensional family. The projective ones inside that are 20, 20 dimensional families. And I will describe uh, some of the deformations of these guys in, uh, in a moment. Um, then we have the generalized Kummer. Now A is a abelian surface or a complex torus, two torus. And, uh, and that's a, a fiber of, uh, take the Hilbert scheme of n plus one points. It has a natural summation map to A, and this is a fiber of, uh, of this, maybe over the identity of A. And, and in fact, uh, it's a sort of easy exercise to see that um, sort of if you apply the uh, decomposition theorem to this guy, then up to a finite cover, that is the product of A cross uh, the Kummer, the generalized Kummer. These are called uh, generalized Kummer. Because of course it generalizes the case of a Kummer K3. Um, and this of course is up to um, a finite cover. Okay, so these are, um, they, they, uh, you, we have them in all dimensions, uh, all, of course, all even dimensions, greater or equal to four. And then we have these two exceptional examples, which I'm gonna mention in a, say a little more in a second, which are denoted a gritty six and a gritty 10. And uh, the number next to a gritty denotes the dimension and a gritty is because a gritty was the first to find them. And uh, so these are two, the two exceptional examples. And um, uh, so I'll say what they are in a second. Um, before, let me say the, what are the main ways to construct these things, example of these things. So the first is um, as moduli spaces of sheaves or objects in the derived category on S uh, on K3s. So including the Hilbert scheme. And um, I, um, Sam talked about these things uh, in his talk. Let me just uh, sort of put down a few of the names the first I should put down is uh, Mukai, uh, uh, Yoshioka, O'Grady, O'Grady, Yoshioka, and then Bridgeland, uh, and then Bayer Mercury. And, uh, and so let me just remind you, uh, we have to fix a Mukai vector. Uh, parameterizing the turn classes of the sheaves. And then um, 
um, Vs will denote uh, the moduli space and the uh, observation of Mukai, which I'm sure you all know already, is that the stable locus uh, is smooth and has a symplectic form. And the symplectic form, of course, comes from the symplectic form on the K3 surface uh, via the uh, UNATA product. Which has values in, um, in the one dimensional space here, x1 cross x1 for a sheaf in x2. If the sheaf is stable, then this is identified with this thing here, or maybe the conjugate H02. Uh, okay, so um, this has, you know, huge theories developed a lot. I, I won't say a lot about it, but um, I, I'll just remind you that to get uh, uh, something that uh, where the stable look is the whole thing, you need V primitive. Otherwise, you get singularities. So meaning a primitive element of this lattice. So the, the, the other way of, of getting it is as a um, uh, question. Yeah. Uh, since you mentioned the singular hyperkehlers, are, uh, are any of these singular ones are good for you? In, the, for your... um, in, uh, in this, from this point of view, yes. And, uh, but they're also, I'll say something in a second. So maybe okay. let me, uh, actually, um, yeah, I'll say it, I'll say it in a second. I'll say it in a second. I'll say a little more about all the, um, yes. Okay, I'll, I'll answer you after I say the other sorts of examples, which is uh, geometric constructions um, starting from cubic fourfolds or a certain special uh, phantom manifold. Yeah, uh, dimensional construction uh, associated to uh, cubic fourfolds or uh, sometimes in special phantom manifolds. And um, so let me just, I won't, I possibly might say if people care about this, I will say more uh, maybe in the last lecture. This would kind of deviate a little bit from the topic of rational curves on, on hypercalers. But uh, maybe so let me just say a couple things about this. And uh, so uh, let me give you the some of the examples that have been constructed. So if x is a cubic fourfold, uh, so cubic fourfold, um, I can take f of x to be uh, the variety of lines in x inside uh, Grismanian G26. And Boville de Nagy showed in the 80s that this is a hypercalar fourfold deformation equivalent to the Hilbert scheme of two points on the K3. So it's in the first deformation. So this is a uh, parametrizing lines. So rational curves of degree one on this smooth hypersurface of degree three in P5. And uh, similarly, we get uh, something which is usually denoted uh, Z of X, uh, which now instead of parameter parametrizing lines, it parametrizes twisted cubics in X. and uh, maybe up to some relation, which I don't want to get into, uh, at least not now. And this is due to Len, uh, Len Sorger and Van Straten. And this is, uh, um, if X is general, it does not contain a plane. Uh, it's a hypercalar eightfold and it's deformation equivalent to the Hilbert scheme of four points on a K3. And um, sort of these two uh, examples have been vastly generalized uh, by, I should say, the first name is Kutsensov, 
and then um, other people uh, by uh, Louts, McCree, uh, Noor, uh, Perry, Stellari, and various subsets of these authors. And, uh, and so moduli, I'm just going to say moduli space. If, if, if there's interest, I can talk a little bit about this in the last lecture. Moduli space of bridge and stable objects in uh, the Kutzner subcomponent of uh, the cubic fourfold, which is sort of the meaningful part of the derived category of X, uh, give rise to uh, hypercalers uh, of arbitrary dimension. Um, and this in particular in includes the, the, the fact, the, two, the previous two examples. So the, the thing interesting here is that, uh, of course, because uh, cubic fourfolds are phanos, they have no holomorphic forms. In particular, they have no symplectic forms. So uh, let me just give you a sort of general reason why a parameter space of objects on uh, a cubic fourfold uh, should even, we should, why should we even expect this to have a holomorphic uh, symplectic form? And the reason is that uh, the H4 of the cubic fourfold, uh, maybe complex coefficient, it breaks into, so H for zero is zero. And so we only have H31 plus H22 plus H13, where these two are one dimensional. And so this really, in fact, looks like a weight two Hodge structure. And the fact that uh, here I have a one really makes things um, look like, this looks like very much the homology of the K3 surface. And uh, again, I can say more later if people are interested in this. And uh, the other, uh, the last uh, sort of um, deformation class or hypercalor constructed from uh, cubic fourfolds is the intermediate Jacobian vibration. and um, which I'll denote J of X. And I won't say uh, what it is now. Uh, let me just say that uh, it was found in collaboration with Laza and Wazan. And um, for general X and uh, recently for any X. Um, and this gives rise to a hypercalor tenfold that is deformation equivalent to a ready 10. I haven't told you yet what ready 10 is. I, I wanted to, uh, I'm gonna make a comment in the second. So these two uh, sort of, you know, start from a K3 or a cubic fourfold or a panel manifold. You have these geometric constructions, which often allow, also, allow you also to study the geometry of these things uh, because uh, for example, there's all this machinery uh, coming from bridge instability developed by Bayern McCree to study uh, the moduli spaces. And, um, but in, um, so these are the, sort of the geometric ways to construct it, but in terms of sort of, um, uh, sort of realizations, let me say, uh, realizations of, of these uh, hypercalers, the two uh, sort of main ways are uh, symplectic resolutions and uh, Lagrangian vibrations. And so I'm going to say more about these in a second. Um, and uh, of course, the sort of basic examples that is the Hilbert child morphism, but um, in fact, the also the uh, O'Grady 6 and O'Grady 10. Uh, were constructed as symplectic resolutions. And so um, if instead of taking uh, V primitive, uh, we choose uh, a non-primitive uh, vector with this property, it's twice a primitive vector uh, with V zero squared equal to two. So for example, on a K3, uh, I take uh, for V zero, the Mukai vector of the ideal sheaf of two points that satisfies V0, v, um, the square is equal to two. 
Okay, and then the statement is that M two V zero, which is singular symplectic, it has uh, a symplectic resolution. And this is what was found by O'Grady. And uh, this is 10 dimensional. And uh, if you compute the second Betty number, you see that it's not deformation equivalent to the Hilbert scheme of points on K3. I will say uh, maybe later why um, um, all these examples, these smooth examples that I have here uh, were deformation equivalent to the Hilbert scheme. I'll, I'll justify. That, that later. But now let me just say that this is because of computation of B2, that's not deformation of those examples. And so the sort of more generally, you can look at, uh, of course, the moduli space of, of this form, MV0, where M is uh, greater or equal to two, when V0 is arbitrary. And, uh, and then this is uh, a reducible holomorphic symplectic in the sense of the singular, uh, um, the singular definition. They're sort of one of the building blocks of the singular, of the singular guys. However, um, so however, um, they don't have, uh, there is no symplectic resolution. As soon as uh, M is not equal, to, uh, M the as soon as the couple M and the pair M and B zero is not uh, uh, two and uh, satisfies B zero squared. Maybe let me put it like that. Okay. So I don't know if this answers your question from earlier, um, Andre. Um, so, um, so in any case, the um, so here at the maybe the I should write a, a bunch of names. The existence of the symplectic resolution in one case was O'Grady, and then the sort of local structure uh, of the singularities. It looks like a nilpotent orbit uh, inside. Uh, um, inside uh, SP4. Uh, and this is the, um, okay, so that was, and this is Len Sorger. And uh, the fact that these are uh, the singular uh, symplectic varieties in that sense, I should write the names of Perigora Pagnetta. And the fact that there exists no symplectic resolution uh, follows is a uh, um, work of Kaledin Van Sorger. Okay. Are there any questions about this? Okay. So um, maybe let me um, write down uh, a little bit what we know in terms of cohomology, because now we know all the cohomology of these guys. And um, so the, um, the cohomology of Hilbert schemes and generalized Kummer they're known thanks to the Goodges formula. And uh, for O Grady 6, um, it was computed uh, in a joint paper with Mungarri and Apagnetta. And uh, for O Grady 6, uh, 10, it was um, in a joint paper with uh, De Cataldo. Uh, sorry, I just associate those two names, but that's not, uh, sorry, Rapagnetta and myself. 
And um, so the, the um, as you, you all know, the, the computation of this uses the, the structure of the symplectic uh, resolution of uh, the Hilbert child morphism. And I like to say that in uh, both of these cases, the, the, the full cohomology group is, is computed thanks to the structure of symplectic resolutions and Lagrangian vibrations. Uh, and in particular, in, th in this case, uh, for Grady 6, the, uh, it used the decomposition theorem. Uh, associated to a certain Lagrangian vibration. I might say something uh, later if, uh, if there is time. And, uh, and so before I move ahead, uh, let me just say that uh, the, the cohomology ring of a uh, hyperkeller has a very rich structure. And uh, in particular, there is an action of uh, the sort of called so-called uh, um, loyanga lutz verbitsky algebra. I don't know much about it, but I just wanted to, to flag this, um, which is um, SO4 uh, B2 of the hypercalor minus two. And, and so the sort of weight decomposition with respect to this algebra, algebra allows to sort of um, get information about the cohomology of uh, hypercalor. So it satisfies a priori certain constraints. And, um, and here maybe I should write the names of uh, uh, Robles, uh, so Green, uh, Laza, uh, Robles, and uh, Yukim. Of course, in addition to uh, Luyanga, Lutz, and Verbitsky. Okay, so um, that was sort of a, a little bit of a general background about these, uh, these things and um, sort of um, uh, one of the themes that come up when you study these compact hypercalor manifolds is uh, how much they are higher dimensional analogs of K3s. Um, and so I will just say a bunch of, a few facts that um, sort of hold uh, trivially or maybe not so hardly for K3 surfaces and hold surprisingly also for um, these higher dimensional hypercalers. And uh, so the first thing is um, the uh, fact that the H2 with Z coefficients of a hypercalor manifold has a quadratic form, which generalizing the intersection pairing on the K3, the cup product. It's a quadratic form called the boville bogomolov form, boville bogomolov fujiki form. Um, so it's an integral, uh, it's defined over the integers and uh, has sig signature three, uh, three, B2 minus three. But um, so here really it's, uh, so let me just maybe, um, I'm not gonna use this much today. Maybe I'll just say a little bit, but uh, next time I'll say a little more about this. But uh, of course for uh, the H2 of, uh, the Hilbert scheme of endpoints on the K3, uh, it breaks into the H2 of the K3 itself, direct sum, um, a class, which is one half of the uh, sort of locus of, it's, it's uh, one half of the exceptional divisor of the um, Hilbert tau morphism. And this is square uh, minus two and minus one. So, uh, and so this available model form is just the intersection pair in here, and uh, it's this on the other side. Um, and uh, because I think that this came up in Sam's talk, uh, so there's this identification of the integral cohomology of a moduli space with the orthogonal complement of the Mukai vector in the full cohomology 
of the K3. And so the intersection pairing on these moduli space is inherited from the pairing that we get here. And, and sort of the slogan here is that uh, H2 governs everything. And so on one side, it's uh, sort of really easy to see what uh, it, it, it's, it's uh, of course, for a surface effect, the H2 is, uh, you know, determines the geometry is not surprising, but the fact that for such high dimensional uh, varieties, it's not the middle cohomology, which is harder to study, but the H2 makes things a lot easier. And so this is why a lot of things that actually could be hard, even for uh, Calabi L3 folds or false for Calabi L3 folds, um, actually hold for uh, high, higher dimensional hybrid elements. And uh, so, for example, there are things like Torelli theorems, um, degenerations, that all of these sort of behave kind of in the way how uh, K3 surfaces behave. And, uh, um, and uh, in particular, the uh, sort of mm, the study of Mm, NEF and movable cones. Uh, so I'll say a little bit about this next class because, in fact, I mean, it, it, it's known that uh, the cones of uh, numerically effective divisors or movable divisors are on K3s are, is governed by minus two classes. And so, um, what are the sort of analogs? For hypercalers in uh, for higher dimensional hypercal manifolds, and uh, so I'll say things up about this work because, of course, um, one sort of rational curves are birational maps, and so to study the, all the birational hypercalar birational models, you um, sort of are interested in, in understanding what these cones are. Um, and uh, so let me uh, now remind, so I, there's another way that um, I always like to mention in, in which uh, hypercalar manifolds are analog of K3s and, uh, and this has come from this theorem of Matsushita. And, uh, and so the, the, the theme here is uh, Lagrangian vibrations and uh, so let me remind you what, uh, or let me formulate this theorem in a way that sort of will be, uh, will be sort of, okay, let, a little surprising maybe. So uh, if you don't know it, but Matsushita. So uh, now X is a compact hypercalor. And uh, suppose I have a morphism from X to y and uh, a surjective morphism and i assume it's a vibration so vibration so surjective with connected fibers and y is normal and uh and suppose that y is not a point um and so of dimension two n okay then exact one of the following happens then either uh, dimension of y is equal to the dimension of x, and uh, f is either an isomorphism or a symplectic resolution, or uh, dimension of y is half the dimension of x, and f is a Lagrangian vibration. And um, so it's uh, it's not surprising that a K3 has either a map to another K3 or maybe singular. So here, vibration connected fibers. Um, so that either maps to another K3, whether it's an isomorphism or a singular K3, or it maps to a curb in which case it's P1. Um, but here the statement is really that you don't have anything in between 2n and, uh, and, uh, and n. 
Okay. So uh, I won't prove this theorem, but I, because I, I mentioned the Baville Bogomolo form, I, I just wanted to say that the main point is that uh, um, if I look at uh, the, the symmetric algebra over H2 of a hypercalar, uh, maybe with Q coefficients, and I look at its image in the whole cohomology, then the kernel is generated by the classes. This is a result of Rubitsky. Uh, the classes, um, sorry, it, it's generated by alpha to the n plus one, such that uh, uh, the Boville Bogomolov of alpha is equal to zero. And, uh, and so sort of the fact that uh, if, uh, if, if I have a class with uh, Q of alpha equals to zero, then either alpha uh, is zero or alpha to the N is non-zero. And sort of this, this N here is, you know, this thing here is the, the N here. And sort of uh, using, using this, this observation, you, you show that there is no in-between uh, dimension, so to say. And, uh, and so it's, uh, it's not, a, so this restricts the geometry of, of um, compact hypercalamanifolds hyper, hyper, Hypercalar manifolds greatly, and so it's not a surprise that uh, when you want to study them, you will either use symplectic resolutions or uh, Lagrangian vibrations. Any questions? Okay, so um, so let me give you. Uh, a bunch of examples of Lagrangian vibrations. Um, so, of course, the first example are elliptic A3s. Uh, S to P1. And, of course, if I look at uh, the Hilbert scheme of points on, on elliptic K3, it maps to sim n of P1, which is Pn. And so this gives a Lagrangian vibration. I forgot, is the base of vibration always PN or is it? Uh, yeah, so it's, um, uh, let me say here. So if, uh, if the base is smooth, uh, then it is uh, PN. And uh, if uh, dimension is four, then it's always P4, uh, P2. Expect it to be um, true in general, but uh, this is a result of Huang. And this is um, Hoibrick's shoe. Yeah, so it's expected to be always PN, but uh, it's known when it's smooth. There's some, um, uh, you know that it has mild singularities, it's uh, Q factorial, it's log terminal, you, you know that it's Fano, but uh, it's not known yet if, uh, if it's always PN. I think there is, um, at some point, there is a paper that of Cho, uh, Miyayoka and Shepard Barron that thought they had proved it, but in fact, it unfortunately contained a mistake. Okay, so let me give you um, a bunch of examples of, of, of these guys and uh, uh, of these elliptic, of these Lagrangian vibrations. So they sort of, um, the first example, of course, is these coming from elliptic K3s, or we have the uh, so-called boville mukai integral system. And uh, so what are these? I, uh, 
choose a polarized K3, and I take from chi vector uh, rank zero, H and chi. And then um, if I have a sheaf on S, F, um, a pure sheaf on F with a chi vector equals to this, then um, F is I lower star L, L, where I have a curve in the linear system. determined by H and um, say generically, let me say that say C is smooth and uh, L is a rank one sheaf on, uh, S, on C. With an uh, Euler characteristic equal to chi. Uh, of course, if C is uh, not reduced, then this doesn't really make sense, but generically this is what happens. Okay, so the support of these sheaves are, are curves on the linear system. And, uh, and the, the moduli space, MV of S, maybe stable with respect to some polarization, has a natural support map to the linear system, which is a G-dimensional linear space, and uh, to every sheaf associating its fitting support, which is a curve as we saw in, in this linear system. And, uh, and so in particular, uh, sort of the smooth over the smooth curve, that's just the, the Jacobian of, of the curve. And uh, over the singular curves, you have some version of compactified Jacobian or something a little worse if the curves are not reduced, but uh, it's, um, you just have this sort of nice way of putting them together. And uh, again, if V is primitive, then these are smooth. And so, um, and the polarization in general, then these are smooth. and sort of um, things work nicely. Um, and so, so that was one example. And uh, so I can do the same with, uh, if I have a K3 of, of uh, genus two, if uh, pullback of O of one is a class with square two. And, uh, and then, so this is of course 2G dimensional. Then, uh, if I take this Mukai vector, then um, these, like this, has square two. And so it gives one of these O'Grady 10 examples with the resolution. And so the composition is a Lagrangian vibration. And so when I said that, one way of computing the cohomology. Uh, so this is O'Grady 10, because uh, curves in the linear system 2H uh, have genus 5. And uh, when looking at way of computing the cohomology of O'Grady 10 is looking at this Lagrangian vibration and uh, applying and go support theorem to this. And um, what... Um, Okay, maybe I'll comment a little bit about this later because the um, the proof of the Yazaslo yeah, formula that Bovilga gives um, uses the action of uh, um, this abelian group scheme on the Lagrangian vibration, and sort of it's a, sort of some kind of the same principle that is underlying this this part here but maybe I'll say a little more, more later. And uh, so here now I wanted to give the example of the intermediate Jacobian vibration. Um, yeah. And uh, this uh, Lava Zaka was in. Um, so this, as I mentioned earlier, comes from uh, cubic uh, fourfold and uh, so we can, in the same way, so here, uh, of course, the, in the boville chi system, the, the bays of the Lagrangian vibrations are the hyperplane sections of, of S, because S sits inside uh, PG, if the G, um, degree to G minus two polarization is sample, it, it sends S and PG, and, and the curves are uh, hyperplane sections. And similarly, we can uh, take the hyperplane sections of X, uh, which um, I'll denote by Y, 
and they're um, so this is the dual projective space and um, they're cubic threefolds. And um, so um, over the locus parameterizing smooth cubic uh, threefolds, we have the Donaghy Markman interval system. And, um, and sort of the intermediate Jacobian vibration is a hypercalor compactification of this uh, uh, integral system. So I'll uh, denote it by J of X with a map to P5. And uh, because I might use it later, this as um, fibers are, uh, so in the same way, the fibers of the Boville Mukai system were compactified Jacobians, these are compactified prims. And uh, maybe I should say this is the um, sort of only um, um, example of a Lagrangian fibered hypercalor manifold, um, compact hypercalor manifold, um, whose fibers are principally polarized, but not Jacobian curves as are in uh, as we saw in the in the Bovey Lukai system. Um, okay, so uh, this is kind of sort of mm, the end of its general introduction. Uh, and uh, what I wanted to do now is use one of some of these things that I've introduced in the first part of the talk to um, sort of um, to uh, talk a little bit about rational curves and K3s. And then uh, from next time, we'll talk about rational curves on um, hypercal manifolds. Um, Okay, so uh, for K3s, it's well known that uh, smooth rational curves Um, they're strongly related to minus two classes. In fact, if you have a line bundle of square minus two, then up to maybe passing to its dual, it's effective. And um, the uh, unique curve in, in the linear system will be a union of smooth rational components. And um, and um, so it's well known. So looking from you know from the lattice structure of uh, the the Picard lattice of, of S, you know when there are uh, these minus two classes or not, and in particular there exist K threes with no minus two classes, and there exist K threes with infinitely many minus two classes. Um, of course, they're always the curves, the minus two curves are always isolated, they don't deform. Um, but sort of you have this sort of the picture and, and sort of everything is, depends on, on the, the neuron severity. And, uh, and so then, of course, it, once you know how or kind of know what smooth rational curves, uh, how they behave, you can look, you can look for um, singular rational curves. And, uh, and so the, let me give you sort of the sort of easy example here. Uh, if I look at elliptic K3, and for example, I assume um, it's general in moduli, then uh, I'm gonna have a bunch of singular curves, which I'm gonna assume are all uh, irreducible. And, uh, and then by using the fact that the OI characteristic cuts and paste, so if uh, a, a um, maybe if x uh, is I have a closed uh, subset of algebraic variety, then e of x is uh, e of z uh, plus e of the complement, 
the open subset and uh, sort of uh, multiplicative structure for all the characteristic on vibrations. And maybe let me just say the only in the way I'm going to use it today. Uh, and this is vibration and suppose that the Euler number of the fibers is all zeros, then the Euler number of the Euler characteristic of the total space is zero. Okay, and so applying it to this, uh, we see that so the smooth fibers have zero Euler characteristic because they're elliptic curve and the Euler characteristic of uh, uh, irreducible nodal elliptic curve, uh, which is a rational curve is one. And so the Euler number of S is, which we know is equal to 24 is equal to the number of uh, irreducible singular fibers. In the linear system, I don't know, maybe let me call it E or maybe E is a bad name because I have the Euler characteristic F. In the linear system f. Um, okay, so going further, um, we have this sort of uh, foundational result of uh, Bogomolov and Mumford. So in particular, that example shows that maybe you know, if there are other more complicated singular fibers um, then, but this 24 always tells you a way of how many rational curves there are. And, uh, and in fact, uh, maybe a remark is that um, in the non-general situation, so in the situation where there are singular fibers that are reducible, then um, the um, irreducible components of the singular fibers um, correspond to the roots of some negative definite lattice that is naturally associated to this, um, to the vibration. The frame lattice, which is uh, the orthogonal complement of the class defining vibration modulo the class itself. And, uh, and so similarly in uh, higher dimensional hypercalar manifolds, uh, we'll see that the source of rational curves, it will be singular fibers of, um, of the Lagrangian vibrations. And in fact, there is some kind of sort of, uh, maybe not until super complete, but sort of there's some kind of general analog picture for it. Um, higher dimensional analog picture for in higher dimensions, which I might talk about next time. Meaning for higher dimensional Lagrangian vibration. Okay, uh, so um, so here we started with singular uh, smooth rational curves, and then we went to singular rational curves in um, this uh, linear system, which is sort of more positive, it's, it's NEF at least. And so now mm, the foundational result of Pugamalva Mumford um, is, uh, is the following. So if I have um, SH, a primitively polarized uh, K3 surface of uh, genus G, so primitively polarized just means that the class of H and the Ronce theory of S is primitive. Um, then uh, the linear system H contains rational curves. Um, so meaning that uh, there exist members of this linear system that uh, break into the union of rational components, possibly reducible, which just means that they're very singular. And um, so the bogomolov mumford theorem has been uh, very important for studying zero cycles on K3 surfaces. So let me mention the 
the veil was in. And sort of their sort of kind of attempts to generalize this in, in higher dimension. Um, so the, the, oh, so the, the Villeboisin theorem that I want to mention here on the study of uh, Chow zero of a K3 is the following, so the theorem, so the following three facts hold. And uh, so the first is that uh, um, all points um, of S, that uh, lie on a possibly singular rational curve are rationally equivalent. So they, um, they have the same class in chapter zero of S. And the second uh, statement is that if I look at uh, the image so I can take the uh, intersection product of two classes and I look at it, uh, the intersection of two line bundles at, at, the chow, at the chow level, so what kind of zero cycle it gives me in S, then the statement is in fact, um, okay, so uh, maybe in the first all points in S that lie on a rational curve have the same class in chow zero and I'll denote it uh, by OS. And, uh, and so the second statement is that uh, the image of the intersection product is uh, a multiple of this cycle. And the last uh, statement uh, is that uh, the second turn class of S can be represented by a multiple of this cycle. And, uh, and so the I don't want to talk about C, but uh, these two follow easily from this statement here. What you need is that there exists um, that the that the Picard uh, rank, the Picard of the K three surface can be generated by line bundles that contain rational numbers in their linear system, and that there exists an ample uh, divisor whose component are rational. And so this, you easily get these two, uh, these two properties. So I, I don't want to say more about sort of these uh, implication on, so sort of this is harder. Um, I don't want to say more about the implications of, of this, but it's, um, it's just, uh, maybe I should just say that in some sense it's surprising because um, this thing here is huge, chow zero of of the K3, and this is Mumford's theorem, because it, um, K3s have um, holomorphic two forms, the Chow zero is um, sort of huge. It cannot be represented by an algebraic variety. So it's infinite dimensional in some sense. Yet, sort of, you know, it has this sort of nice behavior and this zero cycle sort of is, uh, is governs sort of a lot of uh, what we know. Okay, so uh, as I said, there's some kind of tentatives to mm, generalize these, uh, mm, this circle of idea in, in higher dimension. I may or may not say something about it um, in uh, next time or the time after. And we'll see, it depends a little bit on also your interests. Um, okay, so before I go ahead, uh, let me remark that uh, um, if uh, if non-empty, so given uh, polarized K three of genus G, um, if non-empty, the um, the locus parameterizing rational curves. in the linear system uh, is zero dimensional. It's isolated points because um, 
of course, the K3, uh, so if it weren't, then I would have a sort of positive family of rational curves, which would sweep out the K3 surface. And this is this can't be possible because the K3 is not unirule because it has a homomorphic two form. And uh, so in particular, it can make sort of make sense uh, to talk about the number of rational curves in the linear system of GSG. And so uh, uh, we get to the Yazaslav formula, which uh, I'm sure uh, most of you know much better than I do, but um, I, I just think that it uses a lot of the things that I was introducing earlier, and uh, I thought it was a nice application. And so we set uh, n of 0 equal to uh, 1. And uh, for g greater or equal to one, uh, n of g is the number of rational curves in uh, a linear system of genus g. Maybe on a general uh, g, demo, g uh, genus g k3, but uh, I'll get more of that. And so the yaz leslie formula is that uh, um, the generating series encoding these um, uh, this number is um, given by t over delta of t, where um, this is the weight two modular form, weight twelve modular form. Okay, and so I w want to give Bouville's proof of the fact that uh, this formula holds, and uh, it uses uh, a bunch of the things that I introduced earlier. Okay, so the the first remark is that uh, of course this is the same. This t over uh, delta t is by Goethe's formula. the same as uh, the sum of the Euler numbers of the Hilbert scheme of G points um, on the K3. So here maybe I want uh, zero. Okay, to the G. And so our aim is to uh, somehow relate the uh, number of rational curves in, in genus G to the Euler number the Hilbert scheme. And um, so, of course, uh, um, okay, so let's, uh, let's do all, what all these steps are. And um, the, um, the first remark is that uh, if I can choose the following Mukai vector, zero H one, and here, so SH is a general K3 uh, of genus G. And uh, so this is the Euler characteristic, the holomorphic Euler characteristic of uh, things we're parametrizing. And so because that's one, it means that I'm parametrizing degree G line bundles. And, and there are the generations, of course. So just so in other words, if I take the moduli space one with the, this Gubil Mukai system that I mentioned earlier with a map to the linear system, there's PG, um, the sort of general fibers of this are the degree G uh, Jacobian of the smooth curves of this linear system. And um, and so if I assume that uh, um, the, the K3 is general and so that all curves in the linear system are reducible, um, then I don't have to worry about polarizations or anything. And in general, the fiber over a curve, say, let me call it CT, will be the compactified Jacobian of this curve in degree D. Okay. And I'll say a little more about what these guys actually are in um, a second. And uh, and so I um, the I I said earlier that uh, uh, if I take a moduli space of sheaves or bridging stable objects on a K three, that is deformation equivalent 
to the Hilbert scheme of points on a K3 for the appropriate M. And I didn't really say why. And so let me maybe just uh, um, give you a rough idea of why that's true. And, uh, and this follows from the theorem of Heubrecht's which uh, says that uh, birational hypercalar manifolds are deformation equivalent. Are deformation equivalent. And uh, so let me just maybe um, give you sort of, and so in, in, in this case, it's sort of pretty easy to see that uh, the Hilbert scheme of G points on a K3 is birational to this uh, zero H1, because if I take a general length uh, G sub scheme of S, uh, then it spans uh, a, a, a linear, um, a hyperplane section in, in PG where the K3 sits. And, uh, and so the intersection of this Z with the K3 will be a curve, generically it's smooth. And so the map associates to Z, uh, the line bundle on this curve that is O of Z. And it's easy to see that this map is birational. So I don't really need this birational map because I already know that uh, this thing here is, is deformation equivalent just by the general statement that I said earlier. But in fact, this is how you see that, that it's, uh, they're birational and hence or deformation equivalent. So in particular, uh, in, in this formula here, I can substitute, instead of having the Euler characteristic, well, it's the same thing, I have the Euler characteristic of these moduli spaces, where H, the genus of H, H varies. And so now I want to generalize what I, we were doing earlier, namely for elliptic K3s and relating the, um, the, the Euler, not the characteristic of this, uh, this, in, this Lagrangian vibration to the number of singular, uh, to the number of rational curves in the linear system H. Okay, so uh, of course, uh, if the curve is smooth, if C is smooth, then uh, the fiber of, of this, Mm, interval system is uh, just the Jacobian, the degree G Jacobian of this curve and just a Neelan variety. And so the Euler characteristic is zero. And so by the cut um, paste property of the Euler characteristic and that statement about the vibration, I only have to worry about a singular fibers. But in fact, something a little, uh, something more is true and namely that, uh, um, so let me, so that, so this is the first step. Step number two is to notice that uh, um, the Euler number of uh, the fiber over a curve CT, so this uh, um, compactified Jacobian of this curve, uh, so, with, so CT will be in the linear system, this is zero unless um, the, um, the curve CT is rational. Meaning the normalization is a smooth rational curve. Okay, so that's uh, the, the first uh, thing to prove. And the second is that uh, if C is rational, then um, the Euler characteristic of its compactified Jacobian is positive. And uh, if uh, it's nodal, then it's equal to one. And, uh, and the last thing to observe is that uh, by result of Chen, if uh, the K3 is general in moduli, then all um, rational curves are nodal. Okay, and um, so I'll give you uh, a brief sketch of 
just part two of this. And then I will uh, say how um, we can use similar things to compute the Euler characteristic of um, OED10. Are there any questions before I move forward? Yeah, question. Suppose you have a, your a locus where the curve is rational. That in principle probably have some natural skin structure and the length yes. of the point is really is the Euler characteristic in general. So the only characteristic does not, it's just a topological thing. So you don't look at um, the, the scheme structure. However, the, um, and so it, it only depends on the singularities of the curve. And in fact, uh, there's this um, beautiful paper of Fanteki Gutsu and Stratton, and uh, they, how you see, one way of seeing it, Baville does it by hand, but sort of a, a nicer way of seeing it is to realize this as some, some kind of multiplicity. And what multiplicity is that? It's a multiplicity in zero of, so you have the virtual deformation space of the curve and uh, in zero, it's the curve itself, which is rational. And so inside the virtual deformation space, you have the equi uh, generic stratum. And uh, that's uh, the only number is that the multiplicity of of that. Yeah, that's what I was asking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I, mean, yeah. I meant the, the solar characteristic. Yeah, yeah, Thank, yeah. Thanks, Julia. Yeah, so it depends on the on the singularities on the curve. Yeah. So in principle, you don't need four, in other words. No, no, absolutely not. So uh, yeah, but it's um, right. So in fact, maybe that's uh, the remark to say, in principle, you don't need this. If you count uh, every curve with some multiplicity that comes from singularities. Okay, and uh, so the reason why I, I want to um, um, give a sketch of two, it's twofold. Uh, one is that, um, you know, applying the same kind of techniques, you get a very easy proof of the a computation of the um, OA characteristic of OBD10. And second, uh, that uh, you, um, we're, we're going to have the, some group scheme acting on these fibers. And that comes up in, in Go support theorem. So there's all those so that direction, but then also it's a way of seeing rational curves in the fibers of the uh, Lagrangian vibration. So there's all these reasons why I thought uh, it would be cool to, to show this. Okay, so, um, so let me remind you that if C is uh, integral locally planar, uh, and uh, genus G, uh, so arithmetic genus G. Um, so first of all, uh, I can write pick zero as an extension of, so maybe let me denote by C tilde the normalization and uh, I can pull back line bundles to normalization. This map is rejected. And the kernel is uh, an affine group. So for example, if C has only nodes, it's just a bunch of copy of C stars. If I have a cusp, it's an additive C and so on. Okay, and uh, so here now, uh, J bar is the compactified Jacobian of any degree. If the C is an integral, it doesn't really depend what degree is. And we have a, a natural action of uh, pick zero of C on this uh, compactified Jacobian. And so our um, aim is to use this action to prove that uh, point two. And uh, here, maybe I should first say that, of course, uh, the curve is rational if and only if, uh, so C tilde has been zero, if and only if this is a point, of course. And so the, um, there's no abelian factor. Uh, this is also the shale decomposition of, of, of this commutative uh, uh, group, but uh, the, the, the abelian factor is trivial and is acting on the curve is, is, uh, is rational. Okay, um, so what's, uh, so we, the, the aim is to use this action. And uh, of course here I have a stratification of uh, the compactified Jacobian in uh, sort of strata where the first is uh, the locus of line bundles plus uh, a bunch of other stuff, which depends on the singularities of C. And of course, 
pig zero C acts freely here. And as long as there is an abelian factor, of course, the Euler characteristic of this part is zero. And so we want to go on and, uh, and, and see what the stabilizer of the action is to show that, in fact, none of these things will contribute if the normalization is, uh, has positive genus. Okay. And so, um, so what we show more precisely is uh, we show the following. So we will show um, that the stabilizer of every point stabilizer of every um, point of this action is contained in this affine group. Okay, and so why does this prove uh, the fact that uh, um, that number two that we had? Well, they maybe want to change color. So um, because this is um, an affine group, this is a uh, split. Uh, is, exact sequence of group, it's split uh, as a product. And so uh, if this is an actual abelian variety, it's not just a point, then I can find uh, a copy, um, um, a finite group of order n for any um, n arbitrary n that uh, is inside uh, pick zero I can't write anymore, in uh, pick zero of C, and that maps injectively onto mapping injectively on uh, the pullback, by the pullback of the normalization on pick zero of C tilde, okay? And so if uh, once we show this, then it means that I have, um, a finer group of arbitrary large order acting on all these strata. And so all these strata have all their characteristics divisible by n for arbitrary n. And so all the strata have all their characteristics zero. So the, um, the, the crucial point is, is this. And in fact, uh, um, the, I just want to remark that um, we have of course, this is I'm describing describing it fiber-wise, but it works in family. And the pick zero of the family of curves is an abelian group scheme of the base acting on the integrable system. And what this is saying is that the stabilizers are affine. And sort of this is one of the conditions of Engel's support theorem, which is um, why I, I thought I should uh, I should mention that. So it's not uh, um, it's not a coincidence that sort of this comes up in uh, this Lagrangian vibration. Okay, um, so uh, what time is it? Um, maybe let me maybe let me say really quickly um, how you prove the the fact that the stabilizer is contained in the kernel of the pullback to the normalization. And so the crucial part is, is, is the following. Um, if I have a, a sheaf F, rank one sheaf on an integral um, curve C, locally planar, um, then I can look at the endomorphism as OC module of the sheaf F. And, um, and this is a finally generated OC algebra. And so I can take the spec, the relative spec uh, of this, and it has a finite map to C. What I'm saying is that this is a curve and it's a partial normalization. So, uh, so what I'm saying is to any sheep F, I can associate a partial normalization of C um, and um, a line bundle, and a, sorry, not a line bundle, so this is uniquely determined, and so there is, and uh, 
uh, there's a uniquely determined sheaf F prime on C prime such that F is the push forward of this sheaf F prime. And so when I look at the action of pick zero of the curve on the, the, the sheaves that are, are this form, so maybe let me say it this way, I'm trying to go fast, but maybe I should not. So uh, a line bundle tensor F is isomorphic to F, uh, if and only if the pullback uh, of this line bundle is zero in this partial normalization. So if it's zero on a partial normalization, then it's zero on a normalization. And so this is a statement that the stabilizer of uh, every uh, point is contained in that affine group. Okay, so uh, this was a rough sketch of the um, of that statement, and um, and so um, sort of um, modulo the these um, the fact that. This is always positive, and that it's when it's equal to one, it's uh, uh, it's nodal. When it's the curve is nodal, it's equal to one. Then we kind of prove the uh, yes less formula. And uh, and so, uh, if there aren't any questions, I wanted to use the last few minutes to show how you prove uh, the the fact that. Uh, The other characteristic of O'Grady 10 is uh, uh, the following computation. Actually, maybe um, let me put it this way the theorem. And this is in a paper with uh, Hulik, Radu, uh, Laza, and myself. Um, the other number of O'Grady 10 is equal to the number of hyperplane sections. of a general cubic fourfold that have five A1 singularities. And this um, has been computed is uh, this number here. And uh, it does, we were not the first people to, to find the O number. This is in fact is uh, and the thesis of Moskowoy. Um, but um, the sort of the proof is much more, it's much faster once you have the intermediate Jacobian vibration using the same technique. And so I'll give sort of a very uh, rough sketch of um, of this, and uh, and so as I said, so you use the intermediate Jacobian vibration of uh, associated to a general cubic fourfold, so J two P five, and um, and we use the following facts about the construction of the compactification is if I have a fiber here over a point. Um, corresponding to a hyperplane section of, of X, then uh, I want to say that two things happen. One is that this is a compactified print variety of uh, a double cover of curves where, um, so DT to CT is an Ital uh, double cover of irreducible planar curves. And this is a sort of um, generalization of Clements and Griffiths to cubic threefolds with possibly singular points, singular with singularities. And uh, the third thing that we need is that uh, the singularities of this curve um, are in one to one correspondence with the singularities of the cubic threefold. Namely, if uh, this is given by local equations f of x y equals to zero, then the cubic threefold will have equations locally f of x y plus z squared 
plus y, uh, w squared equal to zero. Okay, and also there's a statement about their reversal family, which I'm not going to get into. Um, and, uh, and so the crucial part is uh, to show an analog. Uh, of two and three above for prim varieties. And this time, instead of counting rational curves, we're counting elliptic curves. And so the statement is that uh, the um, Euler number, so let me, with assumptions, uh, these assumptions. So I have a tau double cover of the reducible planar curves. And uh, I have a uh, relative prim variety. Uh, it's canonically defined under those assumptions. The Euler number of uh, the corresponding prim is equal to zero unless um, the genus of the normalization of the curve downstairs is uh, equal to one. And, um, and so that was the first statement and the state statement if uh, the curve is no, then uh, the Euler characteristic of the compactified prim is also equal to one. And, uh, and so um, the, the same cut and paste argument says that the Euler characteristic of the intermediate Jacobian fibration is equal to the number of elliptic curves that um, we have in Sort of the family corresponding to that vibration. And um, if the cubic is general, then they're all uh, nodal. And uh, the statement about the singularities of the curve and the singularities of the cubic threefold means that we're counting five nodal um, cubic fourfold, threefolds. And so that um, gives a result. Um, so yeah, that was it for today. And uh, next time I will actually talk uh, uh, more about rational curves on uh, hybrid gallers. Thank you. Wow, super right on time too. Uh, it's like to the second question. Questions rather. Um, questions, please. <laughs> Must have been extremely clear. So uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Julia, for giving this very, very clear talk. And we'll, um, we'll all meet again one week from today for the second part of it. Thank you again. Thanks all so right. much. Thank you. Uh,